this morning, on this most auspicious of Sundays of the year, I've decided to preach about Easter eggs. I think it's biblical. I read it in Paul's, Paul's writings. It said, he said, I will show you the most excellent way. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, has anyone noticed the vast array of Easter eggs that are in fact available these days? Um, it, it, it's ridiculous. You can have all manner of <coughs> types. My mum sent me in the post a dark chocolate and coffee Easter egg. I can tell you that I've started it and it's very nice. Um, that I very much like dark chocolate Easter eggs, but they're a bit hard to find. You can get all sorts of Easter egg, but I've got to narrow it down to three particular kinds of Easter eggs. It's very Trinitarian, isn't it? Very traditional. Those of us who've been to any sort of theological college or been in the church for a while knows that every good sermon has three points. Um, I'm afraid I have not got alliterated headings this morning, so I've let the side down. I might come up with some as I go along, but I think that's unlikely. So, um, what have I got here? I've got a hollow Easter egg. Nothing in there, just made of chocolate. Probably stand on there for a second. I have a cream-filled Easter egg. Not as good as they used to be. Either that or I've got older and my taste buds have adjusted, but I suspect <laughs> because they changed the chocolate. Right? And I have, and this is not, this is a fabulous <coughs> Easter egg. <coughs> so, Velcro failure. This one, there you go. So, a fabric Easter egg. There's three sorts of Easter eggs that I brought with me. Needless to say, these two were bought in Tesco. And this one was actually bought in that little charity shop over there. I frequent that charity shop. I like to go, I like to take in more things than I take out. And most weeks that works quite well for me, I think. Anyway, I've just taken the other ones off the top because I don't want them to roll away or fall off. Although it doesn't matter if it gets cracked, does it? Because whoop, that's just, don't walk with reading glasses on, note to self. Um, I've, I've turned into my mother, I now walk around the house like this. Because I've forgotten I'm wearing them, but I need to be able to see. I mean, I could have brought you a Kinder Surprise egg. That would have equally illustrated, I think, the third point of my three-point sermon. Um, did anyone go to any sort of Easter egg hunt? Did anyone get an Easter egg this morning? It's very sad. My husband got me a Thornton's Easter egg. I'm not going to tell him I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, a chocolate bar with gin and tonic flavour. Don't think I like that either. But he did get me a gingerbread sheep, so all is well. Um, right. So. Excuse me for a moment. My notes are not making any sense to me. Now, I'm probably going to give some eggs away at the end of the service. Slightly disappointed that the kids aren't in here, but no doubt they will probably eat the chocolate. Um, I want to talk about this egg. Now, this egg reminds me a little bit. Well, firstly, as it is supposed to remind you of what you lovely, beautifully described as a rock-hewn tomb. I once had to do a reading, and they handed it to me just before I had to do it, and I can't say rock-hewn tomb without sounding like I'm Scottish. So I got to the line and went, and uh, Jesus was laid in a tomb carved out of a rock. <laughs> so this is why our Easter eggs are hollow. Um, I suspect really they're hollow so that those who manufacture them don't have to give you a lot of chocolate. They get thinner as well, I feel, but this is a proper Cadbury's Easter egg. But for some of us, our approach to Easter is a little bit like this. It's a bit hollow. Um, you know, out there in the community, Easter is celebrated with um, chocolate, uh, bunnies, 
chicks, uh, all sorts of spring things. I've seen some quite weird Easter representations, but little, re little reference to Jesus. And I feel like, I feel like it's a hollow Easter, isn't it? It's a hollow Easter if all it's about is how many Easter eggs I'm going to get, which is really all my daughter's interested in, by the way. How many Easter eggs is she going to get? How expensive were they? Can she take a photograph of it and put it on Instagram? Um, all of her photos on Instagram look like this, by the way. I may have taken the mickey out of her slightly recently. I, um, just for fun, I decided that I would dress like her. Uh, not to leave the house, you understand. So I rolled my socks down, I put on a pair of leggings, I purchased from a charity shop a white crop top. I looked ridiculous. I had a bra on that was not white, so you could see it through the crop top, and I used silver foil to colour my bra straps gold. And then she took a picture of me going... <laughs> so, yes, um, it's hollow. But I find so much of this world hollow at the moment. It is meaningless. I do not want to see a picture of your lunch. I don't care. What kudos do you get for having a, a nice lunch? What kudos do you get for taking a picture of yourself with your Easter egg? How is Easter about how expensive your Easter egg was? It is hollow, it's shallow, it is empty. And so much of how the world sees Easter is empty. Like, <coughs> take the Christ out of Christmas, take the Christ out of Easter, it, it just turns to dust in your mouth. I mean, very pleasant tasting dust, but dust nonetheless. I need us to say, don't appreciate that sort of an Easter. If you know Jesus, that's not the Easter that you want. And we need to be careful, however, that the trappings of this world don't sort of affect us. It's very difficult. Um, I have stopped maintaining an online presence because I no longer know what to write about. I'm so cynical that after my friend did 100 happy days, where she found 100 things to be happy about, on consecutive days, and it appeared to be that 97 of them were her lunch. Um, I thought about doing 100 slightly less happy days, which I referred to, please excuse me, as 100 crappy days. Um, and I decided that wasn't really in the spirit of life either. But um, it's very difficult to not be affected by this. Um, I hate to use my daughter as an example, but I already have, so I might as well carry on. Um, this focus on what you look like on the outside. She must be wearing, and it's not just her, it's a whole generation, Nike Pro leggings or Under Armour. Her shoes have to be, for preference, again, a name brand in her case. I think that she usually goes for Nike again. She has to wear a little crop top thing your bra strap has to be showing and it has to tell you the manufacturer of your bra. I don't have any that go with Box and Spencer's. Um, her coat must be made by, what's that Canadian one that's all made, everything's into it. But there has to be name manufacturer for all of these things. They have to be of a certain value. And there's no point in me buying her something because she won't wear it, there's no point. Um, but you also will never see it again. It's like a mystery as to where it goes. But now, she is 15. I'm not sure this is how she will be when she grows into an adult, but she is shallow. And it, we can be a little bit like that too when we focus on what we look like on the outside. Not what we're wearing necessarily, but whether we look good, come to church, look like we're doing the right thing. How many times in our lives have we been grieved by um, church leaders in particular, or this week, um, political leaders, who underneath the surface of their moral exterior are doing something quite contrary.
to what they look like. I think, for me, the, the worst one for me was Bill Hybels. I loved Bill Hybels, and he's now obviously out of favour because he's been, he was found to be doing some very inappropriate things. The outside looked good. He preached a good word, but how he was behaving was not appropriate. And we can be a bit like that. We can be a bit pretty on the outside and not quite so nice on the inside, which I suppose brings me to my second kind of Easter egg. Here we have a cream filled egg. Now, I don't know if Easter would be quite the same without the Cadbury's cream egg adverts. I must say that um, I was once spoken to by God through a Cadbury's cream egg advert, so I have a certain weakness in my heart. I was walking through Tooting in London, so that tells you it was at least 25 years ago. I, at that time, was really struggling with my own identity, who I was. I was, well, that was 30 years ago, actually. I'd had a, a not quite so wonderful upbringing. I was still dealing with the aftershock from that. I went to university at 17. I was immature, um, smart, <laughs> but not very bright, if you see what I mean. Um, and I really struggled with who I was. As I walked past in Tooting, the bus stop, there was a Cadbury's Cream Egg advert, and it said, don't you love yourself enough? And I realized that that truth of um, the good news that says that we should love one another as you love yourself has an implicit loving of yourself. Not to big yourself up to be something special or, you know, better than other people, but to have a, a view of yourself as God views you. So, I have a weakness for <coughs> Meg adverts, but that was not my selling point on the, on the Easter egg. So, there is something in here that is of substance, okay? There is something inside this Easter egg. It's not nothing, it's not hollow, it's not empty, but what's in there will last, well, in the hands of one of my kids, 15 seconds, and that's only because, you know, they've got to take the wrapper off first. Uh, um, and I might have to hold it for 10 seconds to make it to 15. It has substance, but it's not lasting. And I think it reminds me of the parable of the sower a little bit. <laughs> reminds me of the parable of the sower. That there are different soils in which the seed lands. And the first seed lands on hard ground, and the second seed lands on <laughs> That's the third one. No. Hang on. Stony. Stony ground. Stony. One's stony, one's thorny, isn't it? Yes. One's hard, hard, stony, thorny. Shallow. Shallow. That's it. Ir Thank you. Brain had a little meltdown. I've discovered that since I had COVID, I have these little moments where my brain just goes. No. So it reminds me. The first one reminds me of. Um, Seed that lands in soil that is shallow. The second one reminds me of seed that lands in soil that is already occupied. The best line I ever heard about that soil, which is the thorny soil, is it was good, good soil, but it was already occupied. So that reminds me of this. It's full of something. And maybe that reminds me of people who fill their lives with a sort of a, a spirituality. And as I go around and I speak to people, I find that people have merged every possible religious viewpoint that they can, taken the bits they fancied, and kept them. And what they've got left is something that it, it exists, but it has no lasting substance. And that's the thing about Cabernet's Cream Eggs. Even if I left this, just out here on the side, it wouldn't take long before it started to look a little bit manky. Give it a couple of years, it would disintegrate. Five years, you just have a pile of really happy ants. <laughs> and that reminds me, I suppose, of people who um, just have all sorts going on in their lives and have no space um, for Jesus. And then there's this egg, which, to be honest, this little thing 
started my whole thoughts for Easter this year. Um, because I then went into a different charity shop, found another one. Uh, okay, what do you expect to be inside an egg? Well, egg. <laughs> okay, egg. Um, and if that egg is... Um, a chick. A chick. Okay, there you go. Thank you. I've got one of those. There we go. Oh, we've got them the second class. And then the egg was good. We've got egg. Here we have egg. Chick. A natural, natural thing is one like fun. Um, of course, given the joys of Easter in this country, we might also find a rabbit. I do not know how this works. Rabbits do not come out of eggs. Why does the Easter bunny give out eggs? Where did the eggs come from? And then there's this one. Any guesses what's coming out of this egg? It's not a rabbit. It's not a chick. It's not an egg. It is Easter themed. Frog. I wish I could have found one of those, that'd be great. I mean, I could have done, but no, do you know what comes out of this egg? I found it, literally has this. A lamb. Now again, lambs, just to help people with biology, do not come out of eggs. This egg, 50 pence from a charity shop, including the lamb, this is what Easter is about. Inside the middle of the Easter story, inside this garish egg that no doubt my daughter would refer to as gopping or disgusting or something, because it's not pretty and shiny like this one. Inside the middle of this egg is a lamb. And the real meaning of Easter, the real point of it all, get rid of that one as well, is that Jesus came and he died for us. And some of us Christians, we don't look quite great on the outside sometimes. That's okay. Be real. Don't be shiny and fake. Be real. But inside, even the worst Christian in the world, inside, is the Holy Spirit. Inside, there is the story of the Easter Lamb. It's not just a nice story and a celebration for us each year. It's not just the same old, same old, yada, yada, yada. It's a story about an empty tomb because Jesus isn't there anymore. Jesus Christ died so that we might be set free from our sin and he rose again on Easter morning to fill our world with well, redemption. Redemption opportunities. This Easter has just been, as every Easter is in a household of clergy, a whirlwind of activities of Easter egg hunts and Good Friday services and Monday Thursday <coughs> at the cathedral and all sorts of things. And there were people dressed up in cathedral finery and there were people like me who went in jeans and a, and a jumper. And it didn't matter what the outside was, it was the bit inside that mattered. And that's what Easter is about, I think. Inside the tomb, there was nothing because Jesus had risen. Inside us, we have the opportunity, if we're not filled with stuff that is not lasting, we have the opportunity to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. And we have, as was in the Bible reading, the opportunity to go and tell. And that's the thing about Easter. Easter has, to me, two primary elements to it. Come and see and go and tell. And the women went to the tomb that Easter Sunday morning to anoint a corpse of a man they loved. And when they got there, he wasn't there. An angel said, no, why are you looking for him here? He's risen. Go and meet him in Galilee. Go and tell the other disciples. They were reluctant to do so because they know it sounded like a fairy story. And we have got that problem today. It sounds like a fairy story because one of the things we know about life is that dead people don't get up again. But Jesus did. 
He wasn't revived. He wasn't resuscitated. He wasn't really ill and laid in a tomb. He was resurrected from death by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he says that power is at work in us today. And that we can go out as representatives, kind of deflecting, <coughs> looking on the outside sometimes, not flawed and imperfect, and tell people about that. We, we are the conveyors of good news. And so my commendation to you this morning, in this slightly hodgepodge of a sermon about Easter eggs, is to be real, to be who you are, warts and all, faults and failings, to not pretend to be somebody that you aren't. But to be open, to release from you, using your words and your actions, the good news of Jesus. It's the best news there ever is. It changed my life. I don't know about you guys. It changed my life. Do you know where I would be if I hadn't come to know Jesus? Any guesses? I would not be with us today. I don't mean I wouldn't be in church. I wouldn't be alive. I struggled with my mental health so much as a young woman that I wanted to kill myself and I attempted suicide many, many times because I wanted to die. I didn't think I had anything to live for or anything to give. I was measuring myself by this. And then I ran into Jesus. And quite alarmingly, one Wednesday in 1988, and I became a Christian and everything went perfectly after that. <laughs> Obviously, no, it didn't, and I didn't suddenly get better, but what I did have was hope for the future, and I knew that I would never be alone. And we have good news that will save people from themselves, from an eternity without Christ, and from living this life without the wonderful, wonderful Saviour walking alongside us. So, Easter eggs. That's what I got from going to a charity show. Not my normal Easter sermon, I must say. Not how I would normally preach the Easter message. But I wanted some illustrations. So that's my commendation to you. Is we have been given, after all this, we were given um, a commission. Oh dear, some people have just come in. I was given a, we, we have been given a commission to tell people about Jesus and to live as Easter people in resurrection power, real and flawed, broken, but as the words of one of my favorite songs that we never sing in the church anymore, I am a wounded soldier, but I will not leave the fight because the great physician is healing me. So I'm standing in the battle in the armor of his might, because his, in the armor of his light, because his mighty power is real in me. I am loved. I am accepted by the Savior of my soul. Who we're going to sing to now. Sorry, I preached on a bit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Easter. Um, took me a while to get excited, but I got there in the 